So what if you have an old legacy sculpt in ZBrush that you did years ago or even just recently, but it's DynaMesh or arbitrary geometry. It's not CC topology, but you still want to animate your character and in fact animate facial expressions as well. Uh, Character Creator has a Headshot 2.0 system that we can send over our geometry. It'll wrap a CC topology head to that and then attach a body. And then at that point, we can have the crossroads of do we want to go the vampire uh route where we go through the face do the face tool stuff and the expression wrinkles and then circle back around to the body or do we want to go the goblin route which is the video just before this where we have our head and then we're going to finish the body out texture it all up and then go through and do the face tools and expression wrinkles um, at that point it's up to you now I do want to mention, if you go to my YouTube channel here, there is the ZBrush Mesh and Real Illusion Character Creator workflow. If you look through this, this is if you want to animate your character, you have a legacy character with clothing and accessories, and you don't want to animate the face, but you can still animate the body. This is a workflow for you, and this is just GoZ workflow. You don't need any plugins, it's just CC and GoZ. You can use the Pose Tool plugin to help you out, but that's a free plugin, and you can check this series out in order to get set up with that. Now, for the headshot workflow, one thing we do need to do is uh, go into the Real Illusion Hub, and we want to make sure Headshot 2.0 is installed. So, of course, here's iClone, Character Creator, Cartoon Animator. Select Character Creator, go down here for the add-ons, and on the Headshot 2.0, go ahead and install that, and then go ahead and launch uh, Character Creator from the Real Illusion Hub. And then I'm going to go here into uh, Character Creator. So in ZBrush, we already have our Legacy Sculpt in here, and it's just a head mesh. Uh, you can wrap an entire body this is going to cover you know taking a bust and then attaching a cc body and then updating the body to your to your liking if you have an entire body sculpted there you can wrap to a body i'll show you uh, we'll touch on that just a bit in this series but like i said we have our mesh here that we want to convert we're going to go into character creator and we don't need to worry about eyeballs and teeth all of that's going to be cc generated as well so again back here in character creator we're going to go in here to load neutral base and I'm not doing anything special with this base. I'm literally going to go in here to scene, character, grab all of, you know, shift select all of these, hit go Z. I'm going to say create and just send over an A pose is fine. All I'm using this for is scale reference. So that's going to bring over all of the CC assets. I'm going to hit F on my keyboard to frame. Uh, with the base body selected, I can go down here and I can say delete other. I'm really, I literally just using this for scale of reference. Uh, my head is in another tool. So I'm going to say append my head to this tool here. I'm going to alt tap the head or select it in my subtool stack. And you can see this is where it's positioned. I'm going to go ahead and move. Let's turn on transparency. Move, scale, rotate, position, your head doesn't have to be perfect. It's not like we're going to be wrapping this to our character flow. So now that we've moved scaled our head into place, I'm going to take the CC body and just delete it out of our scene. And now we have our head that is appropriately scaled. Now you're going to see we do have an expression built in. So I'm going to tap X to go into X symmetry, you know, which toggles symmetry on in the X axis. Uh, this is a symmetrical head sculpt. So I can go through here and I can just go through and just start moving this around. I can go into my move brush. And then I'm going to take my brush menu and just dock it over here. We're going to go down and turn on topological, change that range to 1.5. And that way I can kind of go through here and just get rid of the smile a little bit. Now I happen to have subdivision history on this, so I can actually drop subdivision history up or down. If you want to know how to do this, I do have this actually, this video right here goes into it, the making of this head, but I also have an even better video, ZBrush Topology, Face Body, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I like the title. This will tell you how to go through and do a quick Z remesh to just to give yourself access to a lower res envelope to modify your, your geometry. You could also go in here if you just have a DynaMesh face, you could go down here into Proxy Pose, uh, just dial in your reduction amount. Just drag that slider and that'll give you a temporary low res mesh. You can go in here and move around. And then when you're done, just tap out of proxy pose. And then your high res will be of, it's basically using that as an envelope. I also don't think that you have to go through here and for example, have like a, you know, a whole head and mouth bag and Ziri mesh or blah, blah, blah. It can literally just be a DynaMesh mesh. So I'm going to go ahead, in fact, mentioning this, if you can hold on control and drag down your mesh, it'll follow the topology. And then you can go through here. Instead of using topology, you can just use masking to go through here. And, you know, again, we're just getting rid of these expressions. So instead of the big smile he had, I'm going to, you know, my mouth kind of does a downturn. So I'm going to kind of give him a similar mouth to me. And then, of course, the smile isn't happening. So it's his face won't be, you know, quite so... 
uh, his mouth won't be quite so wide. So I'm going to hold on shift, turn down that Z intensity on this low res here. And then we'll kind of do something like this for our old man mouth here. And this will kind of be our starting point. Now, like I mentioned, if you're just working from a sculpt that was a Dynamesh, for example, that's not a problem at all. I'm going to go ahead and drag off the resolution slider to pick my resolution and then just hit Dynamesh here. I'm going to say no, I don't want to freeze. So, for example, if you just had this, go ahead and inflate the corners here. I'm going to go in here to my Damien Standard brush and just kind of carve this in and then hold down Alt and carve this out. So we give them a lower lip and an upper lip. This is totally fine. This is enough information for a character creator to know where the lips are going to go. It will give you a character creator mouth bag, etc. So as long as you have the features of the face, you're good to go. Don't worry. Don't worry too much about trying to build in a bunch of facial stuff. Character creator will do that for you. So here you can see I've gone through and removed the expression from the character. And you don't really need to, I mean, I'll leave it up to you. You don't necessarily have to go further than this. I tend to, so I'm going to go in here to file open and I've got added detail version. And it's essentially going through here. And yes, we have primary forms, secondary forms. And then also I've got some tertiary leathery skin direction kind of built in as well. Uh, if you're not planning on doing a super leathery character, you can you stop at the less detailed version and you could use skin gen in character creator to detail up your skin or any texturing application uh, you don't have to go to this level if you don't want so now we need to get this into character creator uh, it, as long as it's under five million triangles it should be fine to throw into character creator and bake from i don't i mean honestly i don't really need that much information uh just to make things go a little bit faster i'm going to go into my z plugin menu if you don't have that open it's z plugin i'm going to grab this white dot and drag it over here uh, you're going to see decimation masters open we're going to go down here with this subtool selected we're going to say pre-process current So give that a few minutes. You see this one took 53 seconds to finish that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And you're going to see, now that I'm done pre-processing, I can go over here to the K polys. And if I want to, I can say, okay, I'm at 2.7 million uh, points. I'm going to type in 1,000 in here, which is actually going to be a million polys. So I'm going to type in 1,000, hit enter. And then I'm going to say decimate current. And you're going to see it looks the exact same to me. If I turn on polyframe over here or hit shift F, you can see I got plenty of tries in here. I've got all the detail in here. In fact, I could probably, let's go ahead and turn off polyframe. I'm going to go down here to 500 and then hit enter. That's 500K polys. I'm going to hit decimate current. You don't need to hit pre-process again. Once you've pre-processed once, you could knock this down to, you know, 10. That's 10. This is 10K polys. Okay, that's a little bit low since we're baking in detail. So I'm going to go back up to 500, hit enter, hit decimate current again, and it'll automatically update. So this is plenty to send over. I don't need to go nuts. Uh, I'm just going to be baking a normal from this mesh. So this is totally fine. I'm going to go down here to export, up here to export. I'm going to throw this on my desktop as headshot goblin head. Again, I can never move this window, but basically we're exporting visible. And that, that is the only visible subtool in our scene. And in fact, if you deleted the original CC topology that we use for scale reference, it's just the only thing in your scene, but visible smooth normals is on. Make sure that is checked on. Hit OK. And that will go ahead and export out our FBX file. Perfect. So let's hop back into character creator. We don't need the scale body anymore. So I'm going to go to file new. And just from our desktop, I'm going to take the headshot goblin head FBX and just drag it into our scene and take it, tell it to bring it in as a prop. Now you don't have to bring in the CC body and scale it and move it. I just prefer to do that. You can just arbitrarily drag and drop your mesh in here, move and scale it into a place that character creator can see just make sure it's not like one millimeter high or you know a mile high just make sure it can find your mesh and now that you're in here uh, just like many things in character creator there's multiple ways to get into headshot 2.0 you can go over here to the modify panel and choose headshot 2 um, make sure you don't have anything selected so it's available to you you can go in here to plugins headshot v2 headshot v2 or right here in your menu bar there is a headshot 2 so just click that that will open up a headshot v2 tab and you can see there's two options in here this isn't an in-depth headshot tutorial we're going to very quickly go through the mesh options uh, maybe in a future video we'll do image or go deep dive into the mesh options we're going to very, go very quickly through this just the basics so choose mesh say start head generation oh, we need to make sure select our prop and then say mesh start head generation that's going to open a completely new window which is our mesh to head workflow so this is our align points so right now we have the default 24 points of our face 
uh, here. So if we want to, we can go in here and say auto detection. Before I do that, if this is actually pretty close, you can see this head is scaled appropriately to this one. Uh, if I turn off sync camera and let's say your head came in like this, all you need to do is again, turn off sync camera, use uh, navigation. So basically alt right click for me to kind of scale the head up to match and then hit this little cal calibrate camera button. That'll turn your sync camera back on and calibrate these. So now this is the same size as that one, just in case. But that one did a pretty good job. Now, what I can do is, okay, here's number one. I can go through here and I can just click right here and that'll turn this green one over here. And now they they both have a number one and then that they both turn green because there's a corresponding one on both sides. Or you can go in here and you can say auto detection. And that will take all of these points and apply it to uh, the face over there as best it can. And you can see it kind of messed up a little bit on the head here, but that's easy enough to fix. So basically we're going to look over here at this head. And if you follow the bottom sweep of that eyelid up, you can see it kind of hits just above the one. So I'm going to again, bottom sweep of my eyelid up. And then just below that is the one here. And I'm just going to go through and just reposition this. This is like the middle of the eye kind of out a little bit is two along that brow line. Three is where the brow kind of meets the nose. Same thing for four, five, and six on the other side. Again, middle middle of the eye out for five, and then bottom sweep of the eye over along the brow line for six. Uh, for the eyes, it's pretty simple. Here's nine through seven, and then 10, and then make sure you go to the other side. And I'm going pretty fast. I mean, take as much time as you need in order to get these things placed accurately. For 17 here, you're going to see here's the fold of the nose and then that uh, labial fold right along the side of the face here. This goes just in inside of it along that crease there. And then same thing for number 18. And then 16, you see, goes to the point of the nose and, uh, and the 19 goes where the nose meets the face. So I got to bring my 19 down here and then 16 down to the point. For the lips here, we have 20 on the outside corner, 22 on the other side on the outside corner. 23 is just outside of that vermilion border here. And then same thing for 21, 24 bottom of the chin and 25. I think I accidentally uh, clicked. So you'll see what we can do now is we can start adding more points to get uh, more accuracy. And we're definitely going to need it in the ears. However, if you go up here, you'll see there's 24, 32 and 35. If we click 35, it's going to add the extra points up to the number 35 on your head. So let's go ahead and use those. So 25 was already clicked. I'm just going to drag it up here. And my this ear is a little bit weird sculpted, but basically where the head attaches to the ear is going to be 25. You're going to see 26 is red and it needs it. So that means it needs a corresponding green point on this side. So we'll just tap on our mesh here and you can just grab, you just click and drag, left mouse click and drag to reposition these. So there's 26. 27 is kind of where the point of the ear is. So I'm going to put a 27 there and then the exact same thing here. And I'm going in order, so again, 28, 29, 30, 31's at the top of the head here, 32's around back, 33's at the bottom of the neck, or where the neck meets the head. Now this guy has very thin lips, these are very full lips, so I'm going to say 34 goes about here, and then 35 goes about here. And again, if this is all Dynamesh and closed, no problem. CC will build in what it needs to. So that's all 35 of the basic points. Uh, you don't want to go overkill on any of these. Uh, less is more in these kind of situations. However, on this ear, I think I probably need a little bit more information. So between 25 and 27, I'm going to put one in the middle here. That's going to be 36. Then I'll put a corresponding 36 over here. doesn't matter which side you start on. You can go again, I'm halfway between 27 and 26 is about here. And then again, same thing over here. So we'll just do corresponding numbers here just to kind of help it out, find those shapes because these are pretty extreme ears here. Also maybe the tragus on both sides and maybe even the deep ear hole. So we're going to go and click here 42 and then the other side here we'll say 43. But again, don't go crazy with the amount of points. You don't need to go over here and be like, oh, let me put a point in all these places here. That's actually going to cause more problems than it's going to solve. So just enough to kind of give it 
enough help it needs on shapes that are pretty crazy. I think this will be plenty. And there we go. Once we're done with that, go ahead and go up here. Oh, there, there are more options in here. You can change the opacity and the color of the dots and stuff like that. But I think we're good. Let's go over here and say head gen. This is going to generate a CC topology head that we can start modifying to fit our face or our sculpt a little bit better. Now, this section is actually pretty cool. If you were coming in from like a head scan or a scan data that was like really limiting, then you can actually see I've done, I've, saw, I've done this on some of my statue live streams or my statue workflows where I all I really need on this statue here is like his face. I don't need, I don't have ears. I don't have hair really that I want to use. So you can limit it to just the face. Same thing on the Julius Caesar head. So... If that's the case, if this is all the information you have, you can narrow it down to just these faces. Or if you have a whole face with ears, that's fine. Or if you have a face without ears, you can go through here and you can choose just these face points through here. Just hold down shift and select all these faces. And then you can say, you know, hide unselected and get rid of the ears. In our case, our whole head is available and to be snapped. So I'm just gonna choose this whole head option here. Uh, so it's pretty easy for us. I'm just gonna go to the next step, which is refine mesh. And here you're going to see a guide. If you've watched the earlier face tools videos, this is our CC based topology and UVs guide. So you can scroll down here and essentially you just want to match your facial features to these guides. So this is what we're going to be projecting our CC topology, which is what the lines are. And of course you can go up here and you can change the CC topology opacity. You can swap out the topology guide. You can go in here and toggle the source mesh. Toggle the CC mesh on or off. There's hotkeys for that as well if you hover over. But long story short, you can see, for example, on the point of the ear, you can do symmetry edit. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that off, but I'm gonna go in here to move. You can right click. You can see radius is right mouse, right mouse button and drag, so right click and drag. Intensity is control, right click for the intensity and then fall off to shift right mouse. Uh, and then swapping between move, smooth, clone, and project is shift one, shift two, shift three, and shift four. So for example, uh, I can move, I have conform to source mesh turned on. So for this ear, I can just, I can move these points up to match the sculpt and it'll conform, it'll kind of snap to the mesh as I move. And of course we can right mouse click and make our brush bigger and pull this out. And if your lines get a little wobbly, you can either go in here to smooth with conform to mesh or clone with conform to mesh. And in here you can choose a neutral head mesh or an AI generated head mesh. Uh, and it'll kind of perform a smooth operation but it'll smooth it in a way that conforms to, you know, both of these head mesh types. So whatever works best for you. Now also projection. So you can see, you know, some of these facial areas don't quite meet up with my sculpt. You can literally just go in here and just quickly kind of use the project brush to go through and move or project the CC face topology. And you can also hold down shift to switch to smooth. So pretty quick, pretty easy back of the ear here. This guy's got really thick ears. So I'm just doing a really quick project pass also uh, down the neck as well. And there's also an option before we go and get the rest of our body, you can choose to keep the neck shape or just say, you know what, kind of blur out, you know, blend from my weird creature neck to a normal character creator neck. Uh, or if you're doing just human scan data, you can choose to be like, hey, I don't have really great neck scan data. Just give me the CC neck and you can say, keep neck shape off. In our case, he's got a pretty unique neck that I think will work fine. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that on. And then once I've done all my projection, I'm going to go back through and move some of this around. So we're going to say move these lines into place. And again, these lines are getting pretty wobbly and move these nostrils into place too. But you know, you can always use that shift to smooth or go back into that clone brush. Relax those points back a little bit. So okay, just switch back and forth between the brushes that make sense for, that you need to use and then go through and modify them. Now, when we get into the eyes, it actually did a really good job, but you can see we have a uh, eyelid border and then we have an interior eyelid. If I right, right click and drag in our move brush here, 
and I want to go move some of these points around. You can see I can move the border points around, but I can't go back in here and move these interior points. That's because I have keep borders checked on. That'll keep those locked. You can uncheck those, and then you can go through here and move your border points around. So sometimes it's useful to have your border points locked. Sometimes it's not. I'll leave it up to you. But generally, I'd say that did a pretty good job. And for me personally, I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time in here because I know a lot of this work is going to be redone uh, based on the workflow that we're going to be doing. But if you aren't planning on doing like in a whole body workflow and rebaking everything through Painter, uh, through the body workflow or through face tools, and you're just saying, hey, make my sculpt animatable, uh, then, you know, spend your time here and do a really good job. It'll pay off. So once we're done with this, we're done refining our mesh. I'm going to go down here and say attach to body. And this is where we're going to choose male. We're not going to do any texture. We're not actually going to texture this at all using this process. Again, this isn't a real in-depth headshot tutorial. There's tons of really cool stuff you can do, especially with like scan data. But I'm going to keep the male body, no mask. The diffuse, I'm going to say textureless for now. Uh, normal map is from our source mesh. You can point it to another high arbitrary high poly mesh you've saved somewhere. But in our case, that decimated... Uh, high poly mesh that we brought in is totally fine to use for our normal bake 2048 is fine and again that's 2048 per udim in this case 2048 for the head only and then i think we're good so we'll go ahead and say generate and once it's done it's going to look like nothing happened you got to remember we're in a separate window here so if we move this down you'll see oh we have our head generated back here so let's go ahead and close out of this window and we can look around let's go to our scene and I'm not sure where my prop went. Normally you have to go in here to prop and delete it. It looks like I've already deleted it somehow, but uh, I'll just roll with it if you need to. If you have like a double head view in here, you've got a head over on top of another head, you may have to go in here to your prop and delete your original mesh that you dragged in. Now, if we go back to the headshot v2 tab and scroll down you're going to see a whole bunch of really cool stuff you can do in here so if you, again if you're taking things in from scan data you can go in here and change the skin color and you can do different skin types there's a ton of really cool skin changes you can do and have dial in scalp and you can mask out faces and eyelids any sort of weird texture stuff that may be going on around your nostrils or your neck you can go through here and just use these little drop down menus in order to dial in or add to the fidelity of your mesh like I said, especially if you're starting with scan data. In our case, we're not going to be messing with any of this, but feel free to dig through those options if you'd like. However, this will stay with your uh, scene file that we have here. So if you want to clear this out, you, you can go up here to plugins, headshot, and then do clean headshot data. That'll get rid of any extraneous headshot data that's in here that you may not need. And there we go. So we have our goblin head on a giant man body. So we're going to go back in here to uh, down here to the animation player motion male walk. And just to show you that everything's working, we have our head with the normals baked. We have it's on CC topology and uh, we have a start of our character. So let's go in here to motion pose a pose. And going back to what we were talking about originally, which was, well, what if you had a whole body mesh? You can drag in, for example, here's here's a body sculpt. I'm just going to drag that FBX in, and I'm going to bring it in again as a prop. And I can go through, now that my head, detailed head, is attached to a CC topology body, I can match the CC topology body to my ZBrush sculpt, and then I can use wrap, or I can project in ZBrush to get that detail back. Uh, in fact, if I select the... In our scene here, we have our body sculpt in here. I'm going to scroll. I'm going to click on the material tab. We're going to go down here, scroll down until you get to opacity. We can just drop this opacity way down. So we can have kind of a translucent version of our character body sculpt in here that we want to match. I'm going to scoot him back a little bit so he is in the same position. And then remember, for our character creator, if we select the CC3 base plus, we do have access to our morphs in here. So we can go through here. For example, under body, we can start typing in scale, and then you can scale the entire character down, and or you can go in here and click on morph in the menu, and you can go through here, we can grab like, for example, the lower legs here, we can bring these up or down and let them match the knees, and then the upper thighs. And then for the head, remember, you can grab the top of the head and just pull, and that'll scale the head. Oh, another thing you may need to do, go into your body sculpt so you don't accidentally select it and just hit this little lock icon. That way, while you're in here morphing, it won't accidentally select your prop uh, sculpt here. But while I'm doing this, I'm actually going to unlock the body sculpt because it looks like I need to bring it forward. So I'm going to hit W on my keyboard and move this forward just a little bit. And then I'm going to lock it back up. 
go back in here again with morph turned on i can grab my cc topology mesh and scale this head and remember if you need to go into the morphs tab for example the full head head scale if you need to max it out at 100 and it's not big enough you can go in here and type you know 200 for example but uh it looks like 100 is pretty close to what we'll need so yeah we can go through here again scale up the hands if you want to make the forearms a little bit longer so we're basically going through tap the feet to go into the foot type start typing in scale and then you can change the overall foot scale here so we can go through here and pretty quickly match a pre-existing body sculpt and like i said it would just be a matter of sending the cc body over and then wrapping or projecting your high-res sculpt to the CC position and then using project or history project to get your details back. But we've gone through and we've basically matched our original character. I'm gonna go back to our body sculpt here, delete that out of our scene. So again, if we go in here to motion, male walk, there we go, we've changed our proportions. We still have our head sculpt on here. So let's go into motion pose, A pose. We're gonna go in here to content and because we just baked out our normals, we don't have any textures for the teeth or the skin or the eyes. We can fix all of that right now. I'm gonna go in here to skin, overall, uh, click on normal. You're gonna have see we have a CC4 Kevin. I'm just gonna apply this Kevin skin textures to our guy here. So I'm gonna double click this. And it's going to want to apply his normal map for his head. We don't wanna do that. We like our normal map for our head. So we're gonna say ignore the head normal texture and hit apply. There we go. We have our normal texture still on our head, but now we have Kevin's skin information. Let's go ahead and fix those eyes. And you can use the icons up here too. You don't have to dig through these folders. So we know that right here is our actor. And if we look at these icons, you can see, oh, there's the mouth. So there's teeth here. Let's go ahead and double click uh, normal teeth here. And this one, I'm not going to replace the teeth geometry. I'm just going to replace the material. Then right next to teeth is eye. I'm going to double click this and swap out the eyes. Again, material only. And there we go. Another thing we can do is underneath actor at the very bottom, you're going to see expression wrinkles down here. This is Kevin's skin. We can double click and apply Kevin's expression wrinkles to his face. So just like we did on the original vampire, we can steal from Kevin. And so now if we go in here and again, we'll go back to our scene, we'll select that CC3 base plus top node. Uh, you can go in here to the expression wrinkles tab activate expression wrinkles check with expressions we can dial these in the only problem with kevin's expression wrinkles in our old man face is that as so right here you can see he has kind of a a lumpy old man head and then if we do the wrinkles up he kind of his skin kind of smooths out a little bit because these expression wrinkles are bringing i'm going to go ahead and turn off morph again these don't really strike me as uh, super old man wrinkles but remember if we want to swap these out uh, number one we can at this point pick our path that we want to go down we can do the vampire route which is the very beginning of the series we can say hey i'm going to go through and do the face tools exploration with this character and then circle back around and finish out the body or you can do the goblin route which is again the video just before this where we're going to finish out the body uh texture it all up in substance painter and then go in and do face tools and expression wrinkles if you want to go the vampire route maybe instead of using kevin's you can go in here to content expression wrinkles wrinkle essentials if you have that pack downloaded and you can see in here there's like deep saggy wrinkles i'm going to double click this that'll swap these out now if you do have just like what happened with our goblin we had some very uh specific yeah these these matches head a little bit better uh, and again if you want to see these in motion you go in here to wrinkle check so animation player motion wrinkle check dramatic mail and then he'll start moving his face around and those those textures will start blending in lefts and right yeah that actually looks pretty good that's that's disturbingly close to what I would normally end up with. So at this point, you could say, okay, apply these expression wrinkles, send these through face tools, tweak them a little bit if you need to, do any polypaint changes, send it back, and then finish out the body. Um, if you decide, you know what, even these, these generic, genericized deep wrinkles aren't doing it for me, remember, if you go back here to motion, pose, a pose, you can go in here into the expression wrinkles tab. You can hit this little delete uh, trash can remove wrinkles button go ahead and click that you can send over just the shapes with face tools just like we did with the goblin and create your own expression wrinkles based on the uh, expression data here now i'm going to opt for taking it through the body route so just going through here sending it over detailing out the body doing the texture pass basically the goblin workflow that you just watched now you may be asking well why don't they have a wrap workflow for the body and as of this recording i'll always caveat that with that because who knows when this is being recorded and what, what, when you're watching this so they may already have one by now but
it, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So when it comes to like, well, why don't we just wrap a body? Yes, wrapping topology is easy. Bringing the bones along with that topology and keeping it working within a control rig or an animation situation is a little bit different. So someone way smarter than me is going to figure that out. And then, you know, maybe I'll do another video once that happens and then uh, there'll be a body option. But for now, we're going to do the body workflow where essentially we're just going to go Z everything we have over to ZBrush and just finish the body out. And if you'll remember, we still have this head open in ZBrush. So what we're going to do is back in Character Creator, let's go to our scene here. We don't need to do anything with the boxes. I'm just going to delete those. Sorry, guy. And then we're going to open up this top node here, hold down shift, select the bottom. So all these are selected. And then we're going to hit this go Z button up top. Um, it might default to relink. If you want to play it super safe, you can go back in here into ZBrush, go in here to preferences, go Z, hit clear cache files. And then we'll hop back into Character Creator. And then again, we'll just hit this Go Z button. Uh, you'll see it defaults to create. You could also just say, hey, instead of relink, make sure you create. But I wanted to clear it out just to be safe. Um, as usual, I like to split out my eyelashes and my tear ducts here. We'll say current pose. I'm going to hit Go Z. This is going to create a brand new CC body mesh stack over here. Now, if we were doing the face tools workflow, it would send over our normal, like the normal map that we baked at a headshot, it would bake those to details in our subdivision level six that would be part of our sculpt. In this case, what you'll see here is if I hit F to frame my mesh here and then make sure we're in edit mode, you're gonna notice that I don't have any subdivision history. So all that detail we had baked to a normal map is essentially gone, but I can get it back. Remember, we have our original sculpt here, so back, with our uh, character here, we're going to say append, and I'm going to append our high res head here. And if I go out of solo mode, you're gonna see, remember we, we put it on the CC neutral head. So our guy's a little shorter, his head's a little bit bigger. So with the appended head, let's hit W on our keyboard. I'm gonna hold down Alt and tap on him. Uh, and in fact, I'm gonna go out of X symmetry by tapping X on my keyboard. I'm gonna hold down Alt and hit this reset orientation and then hold down or click this unmash mesh center. So now I'll turn X back on and then I can turn on transparency and ZBrush. And then I'm just gonna go through here and I'm going to match uh, my at least my scale. I have a feeling it's gonna be uh, rotated a little bit too. So here is my head. I'm gonna rotate it down a little bit. Just to, again, we're just matching our overall shape of all of our features. And I'm gonna project this detail back to my head. Uh, when we attach it to our body, you're gonna see this guy's neck shape is very different than mine. If I want, I can go through here and move this into place and match the neck shape, but I don't have a ton of detail I need to keep from the neck, so I'm not overly concerned about that. So I'm just going to ignore that for now. So we have, uh, we'll turn on transparency. We have our head in here. I'm gonna go ahead, just again, just make sure these are both basically occupying the same space, just about perfect. And then uh, with this head selected, I'm gonna hold down control and click this point in history. I can turn this head off now. I'm gonna select the CC base body. And uh, I don't have X symmetry turned on, which is good because in this case, I'm gonna go into BHR which is our history recall brush. So what I'm gonna do, and you can't have symmetry on while you use this brush, is why I say that's good. I'm gonna go through here and I'm going to project these low res verts out, and let's also go into solo mode here. So I'm gonna project these verts. Uh, essentially what history project is doing is storing those verts in history for my high res, and I'm a, it's pushing in and pulling out where it needs to while I use this brush to match the, kind of project these verts back. Now this is camera based. So if I come in at like a glancing angle and try to, you know, project the ear here and then go to this side, you're gonna see it's pulling these verts in that direction. So you wanna make sure you're constantly moving the camera around. It will also pull through thin geometry sometimes. So you need to go, to also to play it safe, I'm gonna take my brush menu, dock it over here to the left. We're gonna go down here to auto masking, turn on back face masking for my history recall brush. That way, if I'm on a thin mesh here, it won't project back to the backside. So again, keep moving your camera around. You wanna be looking straight down or straight at the uh, mesh. And if you ever do get like a little skewing geometry in here, just hold on shift to smooth it and then just readjust your camera angle and kind of carefully go through your mesh and project this back. It'll be kind of a tedious process, I'm not gonna lie, but it goes pretty fast and once you're done, you know, it's not like you're having to re-sculpt the object. You're just basically projecting detail back. So 
Uh, again, like I said, kind of tedious to get back up to where you were. Now, I do want to mention, you don't have to do this if you're using head tools. If we go back into character creator and this guy is good enough and you want to go in here to like, you know, content uh, and, and, the, and the body is fine or you want to morph the body or swap out the normal map in your content over here underneath your character assets, you can put on uh, different nails, teeth. Under actor here, you've got hairstyles you can put on, beards and you know, and put clothes on him. If, if this is good enough fidelity for you and you don't need to do and go in and sculpt in a bespoke body, because frankly, he's going to have clothes on. So who cares? You're good to go. You don't need to do this extra step. This extra step is if you're doing more like creature work and it's important that you have ZBrush fidelity in order to go through and, you know, kind of like make a, like what we did with our goblin character, essentially. So I'm going to shut up for a bit and just uh, let you, uh, watch me project this detail. Again, it's not going to take me that long. It's just a little bit tedious. I'm going to fast forward through a lot of this. Now, when it gets to the neck part, you can just start projecting the neck out. And then when it starts getting a little bit crazy, you can hold down shift to smooth and then just, you know, kind of ignore it. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sculpt in the body details that need to be sculpted in and integrate the neck better for the body. When I get there, when I start doing my high res body sculpt, but for now, I think it's fine just to kind of smooth out that area and I'll integrate, like I said, the body to the head later. Now, once you've done a nice overall, uh, it, you've gotten these verts pretty close. I'm going to go down here to geometry and hit divide, or you can hit control D on your keyboard. This will get us to subdivision level two and then do the exact same thing. Now, don't worry. I'm not going to ask you to, you know, go up to subdivision level six and do this. This will be the last pass. I'm basically the first pass was just getting the points close enough and then the second pass is making sure that you've got enough geometry fidelity to do our project history button fix which we're going to do in a second all right before i hit project all remember i just stored these points in history so it's only going to you know project out to you know down the neck and then as the distances get too far it's not going to bother you know projecting anymore so Basically, what I want to do is go to the CC base body and I want to isolate just the head parts. We can see this one doesn't have any poly groups, but we can always go down here to our poly group menu and we can say uh, auto groups with UV. That'll take your UVs and poly group them just as it says. And then again, I'm going to go back into solo mode here. If I control shift, click the head. Uh, if you have select lasso chosen, hold down control shift and switch that to select rectangle. That'll ensure that you select the poly group there. So now if I control shift drag, you'll see the head doesn't include the back of the eyeballs and the mouth. And in fact, what I'm probably gonna end up doing is control shift clicking the head and then doing control shift S to shrink. That is visible, I'll show you where it is underneath the visibility menu. There's uh, grow and shrink. That's control shift X and control shift S. So what I'm doing is I'm hitting control shift S and that's getting some of these more delicate parts of the eye not visible as well as uh, some really inside corners of the mouth that tend to get projection errors. I'm just kind of removing those from my uh, projection. And then again, you know, this is kind of where I stopped projecting the head. So I'm gonna hold on control shift. We'll go back to select lasso and I'll just get rid of these verts. So with just these verts showing, I can go back to project, subtool project, and then hit project history. And it'll just project those visible points. So I can go through here, make sure there's no like, you know, bad geo in here in the corners of the lips and stuff like that. And you can always fix that with face tools later. It's not super concerning, um, but you know, you kind of want to do a semi clean job while you're here. So uh, we've projected those points and it looks like I got to go back and back off this neck a little bit and that's doing both sides of the head so we're going to go uh, control d to subdivide one more time the subdivision level three again isolate just the head polygroup here we'll do control shift s to shrink around the mouth and the eyes and then again control shift and then alt to kind of get rid of these areas of the face that we're not projecting and then do a project history i'll do it over subtool project history there we go. And I think just one more subdivision ought to do it. Just hit control D and same process head control shift S to shrink. And the higher the subdivision history, the more you might have to hit control shift S to shrink. And then we'll go again back through here and then project history. And there we go. We've got all the points projected. Then you can just go through here and do some minor cleanup. Um, you can tap X on your keyboard since this is a symmetrical mesh, give or take minus a few little spots. And then we'll go through here. And now we just need to do a little bit of kind of re-sculpting easy cleanup work. And if you need to, we have subdivision history now. So you can drop back down to like subdivision level three 
and you know work some spots out and then go back up in subdivision levels or keep dropping down to work on primary shapes and now we have our head detail with subdivision history back on our body geometry so i'm going to fast forward a bit and get a sculpted body that uh, goes along with this head all right so i've got this one up to subdivision level four uh, which is the subdivision I stopped at. I reduced the wrinkle detail in his face, just kind of match the body here. Uh, if you want to see the process of how to sculpt this body, I have a live stream for you. If you go to my channel and you go to playlist and you scroll down to the big blue genie, you're going to see there's a vampire anatomy sculpt video in here, and this will be the entire process of sculpting this vampire uh, again, just starting with the base body and then going through. And there's some anatomy resources in here and just basic uh, sculpting techniques that you can check out. So that's basically how I sculpted this body. Uh, I could continue to add more detail to this or wrap scan data, you know, and transfer poor detail. But I'm just going to go ahead and send this back to CC. So again, we can start. We have a detailed head. Now we're doing the goblin workflow. So we're going to go back up here. I have all subtools in here are fine to send over. So I'm going to go out of solo mode here. We're going to say go Z all. This is set to update current pose. Everything's looking good. All right, there we go. He's uh, he's got now all this did was send over his new proportion. So if we go back to ZBrush, it's not going to have subdivision level four. Um, it's not going to have all this detail baked into the normal map yet. But again, this is the goblin workflow. So what are the next steps? Well, you can go watch the goblin videos and find out. Um, I guess I can step through them really quickly. So we're going to go back here to scene. We have our base selected here. We're going to go to substance painter, export character to substance painter. We'll just throw another folder on our desktop. We'll export that OBJ file. And in fact, uh, before we do that, I should go in here to motion, go in here to edit facial. And we need to go be here to modify jaw open, set that to 50. Go Z all this back over to my high res. Relink current pose. There we go. We'll go back up here to subdivision level four. We're just going to be baking out body details. So I'm going to go ahead and say file export. And we're going to do an FBX with visible... Oh, with visible turned on, so I'm going to hold down shift, turn off the eyeball, just the base body showing. Now we'll go here to export. And again, we'll throw that on our desktop in the headshot demo folder. We'll call this headshot goblin underscore high. And again, that's visible with smooth normals. Once that's done, we'll go back to character creator. We will re-export this so that the jaw is open this time. While that's exporting, I'm going to go in here to substance painter go in here to file new we'll select our headshot demo obj uv tile workflow go in here to texture set settings hold down Control alt and right click his standard skin head texture set we'll scroll down go to bake mesh maps we're at 2048 we're going to turn off everything except for our standard skin head and by turn off i mean uncheck so we're not baking to them and then in the standard skin head we're not going to bake any eyelashes or any fingernails so we're going to do the head upper body arms and legs underneath material id we're not baking off a poly paint this time so it doesn't really matter 2048 we're going to load our high res once that's loaded in we can say bake select the textures and if you want to, at this point, just export, just export out these normal maps. You can just go in here to File, Export Textures, just select your UDIM uh, head, body, arms, and legs as PNGs or JPEGs, overwrite them in that folder, and then just load those up uh, in the appropriate material. If we want to go ahead and texture them, I think in here I have, uh, you know what, we'll give him vampire skin. I have a, instead of a goblin skin or the modified goblin skin, let's, let's try a vampire on him. So I have a vampire skin go in here to layers. Oh, we don't need this paint layer in there. Uh, this vampire skin smart material. So we'll go ahead and load this up. I'm going to grab all these pieces here and drag them out. 
and then we'll go ahead and delete the vampire skin folder. Now this vampire skin works with a base color kind of plugged in. And of course I didn't texture them as with a base color in ZBrush, but remember I can load in the textures from Kevin that were exported. So I'm gonna go to my desktop, headshot demo, headshot goblin. Here's all the exported textures from character creator. And I can go in here to the standard skin head and you can see I have the diffuse for the first four UDIM. So I'm gonna grab all those. I'm going to drag them into this little section over here. And this will allow us to select the first one, shift select the bottom, switch all of these to texture. Uh, we're gonna import these into the uh, project that we're working in, which is not saved yet, and we'll hit import. There's the UDIM textures right here. So how I get this to work, and you're gonna, you see I have a base skin down here. Unfortunately, when we made this project, uh, it's expecting UDIMs, however, dragging these files in, they don't have a UDIM association. So we're gonna have to duplicate this a few times, but it should just take just a second. So uh, this base skin, we're gonna go ahead and call this head skin. And you can see we already have a base color uh, space for, for us to plug into. So we're gonna grab our standard skin head, drag it right into here. And you're actually gonna see if I go up here and Turn off this body skin folder. Uh, this material is being applied to every UDIM, which is fine for the head, but not the other ones. So we're gonna go ahead and do this little dotted square over here. Click on here. We're only texturing the head. So we're gonna turn off everything except for 1001. We'll click on the material to go back to normal mode. Control D to duplicate this off. We'll call this body skin. We're gonna swap this number out for two. Go back to the material and then drag body into the base color. Then we're gonna duplicate that, control D again, arm skin, and we'll drop this down to 103. Back to the material, drag arm skin into the base color slot. And one more time, control D, leg skin, drop this number down, material, and then grab the legs and drop it in there. So now he's fully textured. And at this point, you can texture however you want. I dragged in the vampire. If you wanna know how to texture the vampire, that we did at the very beginning of the series. Watch that. Uh, I'm gonna steal the sex, the modifications we did to that skin. But if we go in here to body skin and I alt tap this, we masked out the head because we had to work nicely with face tools. I'm not worried about that because we're texturing the head and body together first. So face tools will just be expression map coloring when I get there. Um, in this case, I can right click here and say, remove mask. And now this base color is what we need to replace because this is that UDIM, texture fill UDIM base color. So we're gonna grab this base color. Well, we're gonna steal these properties of the base color, but first we're gonna grab these materials right here to shift select them, hit control D to group them. We'll call this base skin. I'm gonna drag it above base color. And then I'm gonna collapse this folder and we're gonna right click on this HSL perspective. We're gonna say, copy effect. We're going to right click our folder here and say paste effects. And so now this HSL is here. Same thing for the levels. Copy, paste, make sure HSL dragged above levels. And then the fill is just the base skin. So we're getting the same effect. Um, and in fact, if I turn off this cavity fill, it's actually already kind of a light skin. I could probably go in there and add some veins, but uh, he's looking actually like he's got pretty decent vampire skin. So I'm just going to stick with this. I think that works. So all we have to do now is get these textures out of here. So that'll be pretty easy. File, export textures. Go ahead and make sure you, we go into our desktop, headshot demo, uh, headshot goblin. We don't want to see these folders just yet. So we're going to go out one. So we're just looking at the main folder, hit select folder. We're gonna turn off all of our texture sets except for our standard skin head. Go ahead and select it and even scroll down and turn off five and six. We're not baking anything for our, toe, our fingernails or our eyelashes. Go back here to global settings. The output template's going to be the character creator output template. Uh, file type, I'm gonna say PNG, uh, file uh, export size of 2048. And right now what I have in there is a bunch of JPEGs in the Headshot Demo, Headshot Goblin, Standard Skin Head folder. So I'm gonna go right click in here, View Details. I'm going to get rid of all the 1001 through 1004 images. So when I go through here and I say Export, it's gonna populate uh, with my PNGs. And I don't have to, I don't worry about any files having the same names or you know these not overriding as JPEGs. So we're in good shape. We're gonna go ahead and save settings. Probably go ahead and save this file, save as. Headshot Goblin Painter. Hop back into Character Creator. 
We'll go back in here to Substance Painter, Update Textures from Substance Painter File. So let's go in here to, again, our Desktop Headshot Demo, Headshot Goblin. Now we're looking at the folders on the inside. Go ahead and select Folder. That'll update our textures. And you know what? We we can even match our creepy. So we'll go down here to our content. What do we do? Stage, Lightroom, Authority. I'm going to see if I can't drop. Let's go in here to Scene, Point Light. We'll hit W. That helps a little bit. And I bet under Prop, let's say Light Sets. We'll go ahead and drop this down. There we go. So I'm going to drop this down a little bit. And then we'll go in here, we'll hit J on our keyboard to zoom right into the face here. And you know, while we're in here on the face, let's go back to CC3 Base Plus. Oh, and don't forget that you can also go in here with that chosen, you can go in here to Morphs. Looks like we need to shift his eye a little bit. So again, eye, eyeballs, eyeball right move. There we go, we'll slide that over just a bit. And then down here under Motion, Wrinkle Check, Dramatic Male. Wrinkles are looking all right, and I think these are the generic sized wrinkles, so they're actually, you know, we can swap those out with different types if we want. Uh, skin's looking good. He's, uh, and again, we haven't even done the face tools part yet, so if you want to fix any of these shapes, if you want to go and make your own uh, expression wrinkles for exactly this character, this is where you would feel free uh, to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and go down here. I'm going to say, and we'll watch him kind of go around and be creepy. We've got him locked into place. So uh, <laughs> not too bad. I, I think he turned out all right, considering we're just kind of throwing some stuff together. So as you can see, there's multiple ways for you to go from uh, character creator to ZBrush and make you know unique characters that can be animated with facial animation right out of the box. Um, or you can also take that into face tools to raise the fidelity of that character. Or you can start with your ZBrush file and go into headshot and then you got two paths you can do the body creation technique or you can do the face tools creation technique no matter which path you pick uh, you're mostly having fun doing the fun sculpting stuff or the fun texturing stuff uh, and then just going in there and finessing uh, to the nth degree however far you want to take these characters so I think that's it I think that's a pretty good broad range of character creator and ZBrush and texturing techniques uh, all in one nice little bundle here that'll let you take control of all the different aspects of the character um, I can't wait to see what y'all create and uh, like I said get out there and keep creating